3764. Elvis Presley Boulevard. Hit it, Elvis. You got to eat. So, George, we started this day quite a while ago, and yeah. uh, I just wanted to kind of, usually we'll do, when when we have an interview, we usually do it in the, you know, in the building, we'll do it at the beginning of it to do the interview, and then we'll kind of finish off the day, you know, with other stuff, but we're kind of doing this a little bit differently because um, I wanted to capture your thoughts and your feelings about what you just witnessed, what you were just part of, how it felt after all these years, and... Um, so we'll start with, um, you know, when you came into the building, you kind of shared, you know, how you felt when you came in. But I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on uh, how you felt going backstage because, you know, you were always out here taking the photographs. And uh, I wanted to, when, when we're just walking out here now to do the interview, uh, you kind of commented about this is really cool walking, you know, where he walked. And Yeah, sure. it, it was, you know, arriving here was neat, seeing out front. Mm -hmm. You know, and basically things are just like they were back then, amazingly. Uh, but, and all that was great. You know, you get all those good feelings wash over you. Uh, but getting to go back and walk the exact steps, you know, yeah. be in the exact room that he was in back there, uh, all that is really, uh, and, and staying in the little three room suite up there on the very top floor, where they stayed yeah it was uh was really interesting and neat yeah so it's it's been a very pleasant experience i'm glad we um you know like i said we did a live earlier and uh, so we'll do it for this video but uh, uh like we said earlier um i've always been one of those type of people and michael's the same way where uh we want to make sure that a lot of people that were part of this Elvis world. It wasn't just the uh, musicians, and it just wasn't the, you know, like when we interviewed Ron Strauss, the pilot uh, on the Lisa Marie. You know, if, if Ron Strauss didn't fly in that airplane, you know, a little tough for Elvis to get to where he's got to go. Same thing I think of you. Um, Michael and I was having this conversation uh, on the plane down here. You know, if, if you're not taking those photographs, and I, I certainly hope in your mind that you, you don't underestimate what you mean to the Elvis world, because um, we talked earlier, you did 65 shows, and you don't have an exact number, but you have thousands and thousands and thousands of photographs of this guy. And if you're not pushing that button, we're not seeing, that, that's, history is lost. And <clears throat> for an example, how did it feel for you just a little while ago when we were over there at that door and you said, you know, I took that photograph of him coming through that door. And there's, then there's no, you know, we don't have to debate. We don't, you know, what side is the door hinged on? What side is it? You, you took the photograph and you took it here. And like we said that uh, there was some speculation that, that photograph was taken in Huntsville. That's been years that you mm -hmm. know, talked about that and you cleared that up. So um, give us a little insight on how you feel about what you did to you know, brag on yourself a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, it really everything started out uh, more as selfish reasons. You know, it's, you know, I'd been an Elvis fan since I was five years old. Right. And uh, when my dad bought the first uh, Sun singles and, you know, obviously when he heard them on a jukebox, he, he, he didn't know what an Elvis Presley was. He didn't know where he was from. He didn't know anything. And, uh, but he loved that music, you know, and, and he, he thought Elvis was a black performer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, back in Panama City, back in those days, there was only one little uh, Thompson's record, uh, TV and Appliance Company, mm -hmm. and they had a record department in it. it even had listening booths. And, but there was nowhere else in Panama City at that time that you could buy uh, LPs and 45 RPMs. Now that changed quickly and it largely b uh, because of Elvis. I mean, his records were selling, you know, a hound dog sold six and a half, don't be cruel, six and a half million for 145. Yeah. And you know, they were still making 33 and a third RPM records on into 1956. Mm -hmm. uh, but that quickly changed too, you know. Phonograph record players, I mean, Hardly anybody had one. 
But when Elvis started selling seven million copies of one single, lots of people went out and bought uh, hi-fi stereos right. to play, you know? And uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, amazing how it started, you know, thanks to my dad. But uh, uh, he ordered those slam, some singles from them and $2.50 a piece from the Ernest Tubb Record Shop in Nashville. It's the only place they knew of to get them. Right. And, uh, $2.50 for a 45 RPM in 1955 for my dad, that was a lot of money. Right. And he ordered three of them. Wow. And uh, I remember the lady, he told me that, I don't remember it, but he told me, uh, <laughs> the lady, nice lady down there, I got to know her well over the next few years, but uh, she said, Elvis Presley, she said, isn't he kind of like Lonzo and uh, Oscar? That, I don't know. If you probably never heard of them, but they were a awful country duo comedy act. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> my dad, he was he was a young man then, uh, and he was pretty. Uh, he was a great man, great daddy, but uh, he was insulted by that. Right. You know, he said, "Hell no, he's not like Lonzo <laughs> and Oscar." You know, and he said, uh, "They said, well, well, you know, we never heard of him." But you sure he's not like lots of us? Anyway, long story short, he got the sons, and uh, he, he called me in out of the yard playing, you know, and asked me, he said, listen to this, you know. And uh, he, he played uh, country music most of the time on the radio, and uh, we didn't have very many records at that time either, very, I mean, very few. And, uh, you know, I listened to those uh, Baby Let's Playhouse and Mystery Train, That's All Right Mama. And it, you know, I was only five, but I mean, I just loved it. And uh, then January of 56, you know, he went with RCA and then the rest is history. Well, I'm still gonna get you to brag on yourself because I've, I've come to know you as my friend and uh, you're, you're not a, a, a bragging on yourself kind of guy, but um, let's just take a different angle on it. How do you feel about what you've, um, I just want to get kind of inside your thought on how you feel about what you've done the Elvis world by by the photography are you proud you got to be proud of your at least say you're proud of your work because your, your pictures with somebody that has you, you told me you didn't go to like photography school you don't know you know you just got a camera and a Minolta right we, well the first one I got was borrowed from my brother-in-law and knew nothing really you know just trial and error you know it, it's kind of an expensive thing there right. you know you take a roll of film and most of it's not good but um, I learned pretty quick uh, and um, got my own camera and uh, yeah, I, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was proud of, uh, you know, I always thought I could have done better and I still do, but uh, uh, there's only three or four of us guys that, that um, That's right. really made a dent. Uh, the other top one, as my good friend Keith Alverson, yeah. uh, uh, he and I got to be good friends early on, and went to lots of concerts together. And his pictures are superb. He's too. an he's an awesome guy. And he, he is. He he befriended Michael uh, right off the bat, and um, we just we got along so good with him. And then when we met you, I said, "Man, Michael, we got two of the best guys in the Elvis world as as our friends." And and because we're you know, into this type of stuff where we're doing the then and now type things. Again, if it weren't for people like you and Keith that have those photographs, you know, that make those photographs, we're not lining up anything because yeah. there's, there's not a photograph to do it with. So um, we, we're proud to say that uh, your work and Keith's work is what makes up 90% of the, of the, uh, photography in our studio we're proud to have you guys you know your yeah. work hanging on the walls so. well we appreciate it I can guarantee you yeah, that you do I want to get your thoughts on you sit out here in 1977 it was the last time you saw Elvis um, June 2nd mm -hmm. um, part of a redo show right because he canceled out in April because right. he was sick and uh, so you had no way of knowing obviously but um, when you walked out here just now on this stage, 
What was that feeling like? Because like I say, you were always out here. You know, the last time, like I say, the last time you're out here is June 2nd, 77. Um, what was that like to walk out here and kind of be on the same, you, you were on the stage. I mean, this is the stage The the uh, production manager just told us, he said, there's, there's nothing changed. This yeah. is, he walked on this tile right here. Yeah. It, um, uh, <laughs> some, uh, it, uh, it's exciting. I mean, uh, to think how many years it's been and that this is the same stage, yeah. the same, everything's the same. Yeah. Uh, they're going to start doing some renovating, but right now everything is exactly like the dressing room move in and back there's mm -hmm. the same one. Because mm -hmm. you can look at the pictures that, that was taken of him and that uh, uh, little girl, yeah. and it's the same room. I yeah. mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, and the pathway he took to come out that door uh, with Red standing behind him, you know, yeah. where I took the picture. Uh, it's, uh, after all these years, it's almost, uh, you know, impossible to even imagine. I w I'm really surprised that the auditorium is still standing. Yeah. And uh, like the guy told us that they're not going to level it, they're just going to renovate, renovate it, it, which I think is, is a great idea. But uh, yeah, it brings back a lot of memories. Yeah. Uh, did, um, another thought that I want to touch on with you is, um, you know, a lot of us always have the comment, uh, a person that meant so much to me that I never knew. I, I kind of look at you a little bit differently in that because it's almost like you did because you, you saw the guy 65 times. The guy shook your hand. There's, there's a film of, and we'll try to include that in a the video, there's film of him getting on the plane in Huntsville and, and you get a handshake. And it happened more than once, right? Oh, yeah, several times. And so... And I got two scars from him that, uh, I mean, he put right in my hand, you know. I guess he thought, well, it's a guy, but, uh, you know, I, I certainly don't think Elvis knew me, right. but he may have known my face because right. he saw it several times. Well, and I think that's what I, what I was touching on there was that you know, you never met him. You know, he wasn't like a friend, like as you know, you right. and I are friends. But there's still that aspect of I don't know. It's I know it's a deep, deep thought. But when we were out there talking a little while ago, you know, I said it's it's like you're coming back to see an old friend, is what I'm yeah. saying. So when you walked in this building, I kind of got the feeling like you were coming back after what, 46 years now? You were coming back to see an old friend. You know, he's not here, but this is about as close as we can get. I, yeah. think, I think we accomplished it. Yeah. I think we accomplished it. Yeah, it's it, uh, definitely, I mean, the, you know, the water fountain and all that out front, just like it was then. Yeah. And uh, coming through those doors, you know, it, it all comes back. Um, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great, uh, great seven years here at uh, Mobile. Yeah. And he played, he played here as uh, many or more times than he played anywhere, mm -hmm. other than Las Vegas I'm right. talking about. Right. But he definitely had a connection with Mobile. Yeah. You uh, know, and we saw the little seafood restaurant where he ate mm -hmm. back in 54, 55. Right. In the early days. Yeah. 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 Um, usually when you're interviewed, you know, when we talk to people, we've talked to a lot of people in the Elvis world, you know, I kind of throw the question out there and let you answer it, but I want to do something a little bit differently on this one. Um, since we're getting ready to wrap things up and we're getting ready to say goodbye to the building, uh, I want you to, you know, you've got a grandson now that is turning to be a big Elvis fan and, you know, he's going to look at this video, you know, when it's done and he's going to say, you know, that's my grandpa. So if there's anything that you want to, say that you know kind of to kind of close it out to say you know this is what I want the Elvis world that's going to view this video this is what I and my grandson and my family whoever watches this video this is something that I really want them to know about me with regards to what I did can you share with me what well, your thoughts are I think I think they all know you know that uh, that was my original family 
mom and daddy and two sisters, you know, Elvis was like a member of the family. Yeah. I mean, literally. Yeah. Uh, and it's been pretty much that way since I got married and had kids, you know, because uh, they came up listening to all the same things that, that I listened to. And uh, I think uh, uh, my grandson, my kids, uh, Sorry, my daughter, she came along a little too late uh, to to see any shows, but uh, she was born, uh, uh, just about four months after Elvis died, so obviously. Uh, but my son did get to see him uh, three, three different shows. He was just a little guy and got the scarf from him and all in Jacksonville, so. Uh, you know, I think they, they've all got a special place in their heart for, for Elvis and uh, for their granddad or dad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, understand how that, what that means uh, to my parents as well. Uh, and they got to know them well before they passed away. So that, that was good. Well, I think that was well said. I think that uh, I heard somebody say the other day, you can't listen to Elvis's music and not be happy. And, you know, we talked about this before. We talked about it last night at dinner. Um, you know, I think Elvis made a difference in a lot of people's lives that never met him. And I think that a lot of people learned a lot of good things, a lot of good traits from him. I know I did. Mm -hmm. I know I learned from him, um, you know, how to, I really like to think that um, I learned, one of the things I learned from him is how to speak to people how to be nice to people, how to be considerate, you know. Yeah. And um, that's a big thing that came from my, you know, being a fan of his. And again, like I say, never met the guy. And we talk to these young fans all the time and I say, you know, how could a guy that you never met have such a big impact on your life? That's a special guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's right. a special guy. Um, I want to wrap up this interview with, um, before we leave, um, the final thing you did in this building with regards to Elvis was the final thing that you did for Elvis, correct? Yeah. So just touch on that, June 2nd, 1977. You didn't know what just laid around the corner, but just talk about that day and... and well, uh, you know, it was a good show. He, he, you could tell he wasn't well, but it was really a good show, vocally especially. Uh, but I just had this impending doom, whatever feeling in the back of my mind that, you know, it wasn't going to be long. Uh, although that night he did a great show. I mean, you know, vocally and all that, it was, it was superb. But uh, um, I really felt like, you know, it looked like things were getting close to the end. And uh, we, we, I was pretty stunned when you hear the news, but mm -hmm. stunned, but really not that surprised. Uh, but that doesn't take away from, uh, you know, like I say, I'd been a fan since I was five. So, you know, many years of enjoyment and excitement going to concerts yeah. and all those things. And uh, uh, he's been a huge part of my life and still is. Uh, and a large portion of my family as well, yeah. you know. But, uh, and it's been really nice coming back over here and uh, reliving all those memories. Because uh, this was a special place. He, you know, he played here seven times. Well, like we said earlier, we had options on where we could have gone. You could have picked any place and that's where we were gonna go. But uh, Mobile worked out and I told Michael, I said, what perfect venue, you know? You saw him here the first show in 70 and you closed it out in 77. One, one quick question I wanna ask you because you were at so many shows and you saw him at different periods of time. I have said, and I want your opinion on it, I have said that um, if you listen to Elvis in 77, it's my opinion vocally, he was much more richer and the voice literally was getting better. Would you agree with that? Yes. It's, it, which was amazing, you know, I mean, yeah. Uh, he had more range, he had more depth, uh, and he could sing literally anything. Right. 
you know, he definitely could still sing rock and roll, but he could sing uh, almost operatic, right. uh, operatic, you know, uh, just incredible range, you know, yeah. great singer. Uh, it's, it kind of tickles me when you read back in 55 and 56 when he first burst on the scene, you know, and all these writers, of course, they were old white men, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Mm -hmm. All those writers that were writing those horrible articles, they said, you know, they called him every name in the book and said he couldn't sing and he couldn't do this and he couldn't do that, you know, and here he is, you know, making great music, selling millions of records, more than anybody. And these clowns, you know, at the time, or, you know, there's, uh, if you've seen uh, This Is Elvis uh, movie, shows the actual film footage of old fat white DJs back in the 50s saying smashing, smashing those yeah. 78 RPMs and I was thinking yeah. you idiot you know the thing's worth a couple of grand at yeah. least yeah. and uh, they're all saying oh, this is trash you know he's singing that you know kind of music um, use the word they use but to, they were just ignorant yeah um, and you know Elvis went on to sell yeah. I think uh, uh, the years ago, uh, Bill Board had an ad that said that he had sold over one and a half billion records mm -hmm. worldwide mm -hmm. that they had could document, right. you know. Right. That's not counting all the, uh, especially in the foreign countries, they used to counterfeit them, you know, and sell them. And there's no way RCA could press, you know, charges against some company halfway around the world, some little country that... Uh, who knows where, but um, that's a lot of records. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on um, the young fans that are out there doing what we do, and we're you know we're on Instagram. Uh, we're seeing all the you know the young fans coming up, and that's exciting. And you know you've spent the last couple of days with with one. You know he's 21 mm -hmm. years old and uh, loves Elvis you know as much as I do, and he, I can at least say I walked planet Earth while Elvis did. He can't say that, you yeah. know. So he's he's the next generation down, and and we've we've got a, some friends that uh, on Instagram that are you know friends of ours that do the same. Not they don't do what we do, but you know they have the uh, site set up where they're doing different aspects of Elvis's life, mm -hmm. and uh, it's pretty cool to watch because they're they're young, and you know like I say they they weren't around when Elvis was around. You know mm -hmm. I can at least still remember that. Yeah. Um, but it's exciting to watch. And you're thinking, you know, we're gonna be soon on 50 years since he left. And there's people out there that are still just crazy about it. Yeah. So that says a lot. We, yeah, just the success of uh, the movie. Uh, right. Uh, I mean, that was, I mean, that even surprised me. Yeah. I mean, just worldwide hit, yeah. uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in profit. Uh, Nom won the Golden Globe, nominated for Academy Award. I mean, it had like I think seven or eight different nominations. Right. I mean, that's an honor in yeah. itself. Yeah. You know, uh, it's he's unique. He is absolutely. He is one of a kind. Well, it's been a long day. You've had a long day, and uh, but a lot of great memories relived. I could see it in your face as we were going through here and. Uh, doing all the things that we did today from the hotel to the uh, walking in to the fountains to the uh, going backstage um, you got to see him fire up the spotlight the that spotlight. hasn't been lit for decades but that was the one that lit up the 1970s show that was he told me that was the the one they they burned for the uh, you know for most of elvis's shows was mm -hmm. that spotlight yeah and it's still fired up and we got to sit here and listen to some uh i think just like when we did Estelle Brown, I think that's that was the the where I saw you really feel like the connection where, you know, so yeah. well, we can't thank you enough for the time you spent with us and we can't thank you enough for driving over here. And uh, we consider you one of our best friends in the Elvis world. So well, the feelings we, are major. I know yeah. that. We, yeah, just good want, we just want to say thank you. You're welcome. Right. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, as well as follow us on all of our social media accounts using the link in the description below.